never ceases to amaze me how people all around the world, either through my films or through the books by Ellen Montgomery, continue to fall in love with Anne Shirley. I think audiences are in love with the world of Avonlea and Green Gables because it's such an antidote to the world that we live in today. It's the idyllic world that we all aspire to, that we hope still exists, where people, even though they can be hard-hearted, still befriend each other. The good sense I admire in you left you when that child walked in your door. So the sense of community is really, really, I think, one of the big attractions to the novel. But more than that, it's it's about relationships and how relationships can happen under the most unusual of circumstances. It's about growing old. It's about leaving home. It's about falling in love for the first time. It's a book that just seems to have all of the aspects of the human condition that we all experience growing up as part of its, its fiber. And I think that its success has been that it has been passed down from one generation to another so that often a mother reads it to her family, they remember it, they pass it down to their children. And it really defines a classic, that a, a book that can be passed on from one generation to another. And even though most people might say Anna Green Gables, it's an old chestnut, why is it even relevant today? She defines the modern woman. She has a mind of her own, she's outspoken. Dare you say I'm skinny and carrot! But she also has a tender heart, she has an ability to forgive, and she has a wisdom that goes beyond her years. She's also very ambitious and can do what many of the other characters who she's surrounded by are either afraid of doing or incapable of doing. Her relationship with Gilbert is also a very modern relationship in some respects because it's about two people who are in each other's eyes equal to each other. And so they have that sense of respect and caring for each other in that they treat each other as equals. In some respects, they are the best of friends. And I think that's another big appeal to the story that has helped maintain its classical quality. I approached it not as someone who loved the book, but more just as an interpreter. I interpreted what I saw in front of me, and in, in that respect, it was unencumbered. I wasn't forced to, um, to feel as though it had to be raised to a certain level. I just knew that what I wanted to do was give the audience an impression, a very true impression of what the book would have been if they were watching it on screen. And in some ways, that's the way I've approached the other films. Many of Montgomery's later books I felt were difficult to interpret as a single film, and so when I did Anne of Green Gables, the sequel, I created a compendium story out of elements from many of the other books. For Anne of Green Gables, the continuing story, I had done almost 100 episodes of television of Road to Avonlea that had brought the time frame of Anne's world into another age. So I ended up having Anne and Gilbert go off to the First Great War, where in Montgomery's books, her books were set 20 years earlier, Anne and Gilbert stayed at home and watched the war through the eyes of their children. Somehow Anne, though, connects all the way along the journey of her life. She builds family and community at every single stage. She connects with people, she brings them together, she creates her own world, and yet, so often along the way she loses faith in herself. It's a normal human foible. And what I really wanted the audience to see and understand was that this is an extraordinary character who survives because she, despite all the odds against her, she does believe in herself and she is able to kind of marshal this internal energy. Oh, Green Gables, yonder. Even the mythical house of Green Gables takes on a metaphor in Anne's reality throughout her life. It's real, but it is real, and we're nearly home. The condition of the property almost seems at times to yeah. mirror her persona, as events in her life continue to unfold against its background. In the first Anna Green Gables film, the house holds a charm and an emotional chemistry that holds a kind of a magical existence over Anne's life as she grows into womanhood and is brought up by the Cuthberts. In Anna Green Gables, The Continuing Story, the building is discovered as abandoned 
and dilapidated and reflects that time period of war and uncertainty and confusion as events in the world at large started to threaten Anne's happiness. In Anne of Green Gables, A New Beginning, Anne goes on to consider selling the old homestead, but once again, the building yields a secret when she receives an unexpected letter and a change of heart from someone in her past. The cinematic image of Green Gables that we created in all four films is such a strong icon that it speaks volumes about the importance of home and the strength of relationships that evolve under such a protected haven. Green Gables signifies security, family, community, all of the essentials that bind humans together in happiness. Green Gables in some ways is not only a home for Anne, it symbolizes the doorway to her life and to her very survival. Eventually, the more love a person gives, the easier it is to find. It's the only part that matters, nothing else. And it's so much nicer to be Anne of Green Gables than to be Anne of Nowhere in particular. So many differences have happened, but uh, between Montgomery's world and, and the world that I've portrayed on film, but I've always approached the material f through the eyes of Anne as a character and wanting to at least be true to who she is as Montgomery has created her. Anne's world seems to be a magnet for audiences and fans of the novel to the things we all want most in life. The image of Green Gables in some ways is the distillation of the very best of the human condition. All of our common hopes, desires, and dreams are wrapped up in everything it symbolizes.